Why is the limit switch opening? Furnace is getting hot, limit switch is opening. This is the limit switch right here. This is a HAL 90% gas furnace, and it's got some age on it. It's a little bit old. We're gonna jump out the switch, and I'm gonna show you why this limit switch is opening. I don't run into this problem very often, so I definitely wanna do a video and teach you today why this limit switch is opening. You're watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad, let's get started. Let's jump out the switch. I've also got the R and the W jumped, so we're giving a call for the heating operation. Now we're going to take our infrared thermometer here and have this ready so that I can actually measure the temperature of how hot the furnace is getting. Got my meter. So I can measure the limit switch across the limit switch because right now it should be closed. So here's the meter, turn it to volts AC, take it, mount it. Now we're going to take and measure from ground or common right here on the cabinet. And then if you can take a look, there's one side of the limit switch. Make sure you can see the meter here. All right, right here, one side of the limit switch, 25 volts. Other side of the limit switch, 25 volts. So you can see this is closed. All right, we're gonna let this run for a few minutes and you're gonna see what happens. It's not gonna take very long limit switch is going to open. I'm going to show you another way to measure across this switch. Take your meter leads and measure from one side of the switch to the other and while it's closed you should read nothing but when it opens you're going to read voltage so you saw nothing. See that? That means it's closed. You're not going to read voltage while it's closed. Checking with the little infrared gun here, it's 155, 156, 158, 160. This switch opens at 190. So we're checking with our infrared thermometer. Now let's check the switch. Measuring across the switch, we got 26 volts. So that means it's open. Now measuring from one side of the switch zero volts, other side of the switch, 26. So the limit switch is opening. All right, so I'm gonna do another test just to make sure that I know if one, it's getting too hot or we have a bad limit switch. Because it could be a bad limit switch, but we wanna make sure that if there is something that's blocking the airflow uh, that we figure that out. So I'm gonna take this K-type thermistor here and I'm going to slip the sensor in line with the airflow right here. See? Like this. All right. I'm going to take and put that switch back in. And I'm not going to screw it all the way down because I don't want to pinch or cut the wire that leads to that thermistor and then I'm going to take my meter leads out and I'm going to switch it to temperature and then put this in here we're going to turn that on and now we're going to measure the temperature of the air all right because with the infrared thermometer we're measuring the surface temperature now we're going to measure the air temperature so I'm going to put this door back in. That way we can close the switch down here. All right. Switch is closed. So the fan hasn't kicked on yet. It's 226 degrees, 235 degrees, 242 degrees. So it's definitely getting really hot. Here goes the fan. Immediately it starts cooling it down. 
how it's below 190. See that? Now let's see how long it takes to kick it out and then figure out what the temperature is. All right. Just leave that right there. It's already over. Look, it hasn't been running five minutes. It's already over 190. So I wouldn't be surprised if the flame Stops. 196, it's definitely getting too hot. Two hundred, yep, it's definitely getting too hot. So it's not a bad limit switch. We've got a blockage, and I'm gonna talk about where it is. Limit switch is still not open. Holding on for dear life. The limit switch is holding on for dear life. Yep. But you can see 210 degrees, it looks like. 210, that's hot. It should open up any minute. Wow. It is still hanging on. <laughs> there it goes. All right. There she goes. All right. Causes for a limit switch to open, things you need to check when you're in the field. Dirty filter. Is the filter clean? If it's not, that can cause uh, low airflow and excessive heat. Indoor fan. If the indoor fan's not working, then that means there's not enough airflow and that will cause excessive heat. Limit switch to open. Check your filter, check your fan. Supply vents. The vents in the home that blow the air out, if those vents are closed, that will cause low airflow. A restriction of airflow that will cause excessive heat. So filter, vents, fan, what else? A dirty indoor coil. Check the indoor coil. Maybe that's dirty enough and that's causing the pressure drop. That's restricting the flow of the air and that will cause excessive heat. Those are a few things. Now one thing that's a little bit rare is the indoor, if it's a 90 percent, that means it's got two heat exchangers and the secondary heat exchanger could be dirty enough that it's blocking the air. I think that's what's wrong with this one. And we're gonna take this heat exchanger out and we're actually gonna to have to clean it. But first we're gonna take the blower out and actually look with an inspection camera and find out if that is the problem. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take and cut this PVC. This is our drain for our 90%. I'm gonna take and cut this, get it out of the way, and then take out this trap which needs to be cleaned yearly and then I'll be able to slide the blower housing out. I'm gonna get that done. The blower housing out of the way here. Got my little Armacell insulation down. That way I don't get too dirty. Let's take a look inside. See that? So that is the secondary heat exchanger. And you can see it looks pretty dirty so we need to clean that and then we should have better airflow but if you don't know this it's gonna throw you for a loop and you're you're not gonna know what to do you can see how I took some of this return loose because I was trying to see if maybe it was something to do with the return I took the front face off of this coil and then I took the uh, piece of metal on the front of the A coil off. That way it could blow um, not through the coil because I thought, well, maybe that's it. And this is the last thing that I checked. So that's it. That's the problem. Now I'm going to clean it and then I'll put everything back together. And now I've got to get some half inch C PVC couplings to put it all back. Also, I'll want to go ahead and clean this trap. That's for the 90%. All right. So I guess the only way to do this the right way is to take everything out. So I'm going to have to take all of this, what you see, out. That's what I'm about to do. I've already got the 90%, the PVC pipe loose. So I'm going to take the rest of this out. And then I'm going to pull that heat exchanger out of there. So check out this crack. 
in the collector box. Just took the inducer motor off because got to take it off to get to some of these screws to take this off and this is cracked. So that's a problem. I wonder why that cracked. I bet you that was excessive heat. So, all right, I guess I'm gonna keep taking it apart. Got the collector box out of the way. There's the back where it's cracked. And this is where it was cracked right here. There's the secondary heat exchanger. We got the wiring harness out of the way. Got to have pipe wrenches to take the union loose. I already shut the gas off. Good deal, dude. Awesome. Got the burner assembly out of the way. And now we're seeing if it'll move out. Looks like it will. Primary and secondary heat exchanger are connected, so they both have to come out at the same time. We had three screws up here that we almost couldn't get to, but hoping we don't find any more problems so far. We found that the union was loose. It wasn't tight. We found that the collector box was cracked. And right now, we're looks like we're breaking the wire out. There it is. Actually, flip it over. It yeah. Which way? This one. Yeah. Mm, I hear that rust. Jeez. Oh, oh, it is pretty dirty, dirty though. Not... Yeah, but that could do it, man. Really Look at that. Yeah, it's pretty dirty, man. Yeah, What's up? Oh, is it cracked? Possibly. We need to get a better look at oh, it. Oh, man. Hope we can get this fixed today and get it back. Oh, no. Oh, she's done. It's cracked. What'd I tell you? Man. what I tell you? You said it. Wait, why are we doing that? It's cracked, dude. We shouldn't do that. <laughs> yes, we should. No, we shouldn't. Look at that. I want to fix this like thing, man. Polish, dude. Is it? Yeah, it is. It's, that. it's blown it's out, man. It is cracked bad. She's dead, Jim. I'm sorry, brother. I can't put you back together today, okay? But I did figure out why limit switch was open, so. And that's the secondary, and this is the primary. This is the part that creates the condensation. And that condensation comes out these tubes, and it goes inside the collector box, and then it leaves through a drain. What am I going to do now? I'm going to get the customer a price on a new furnace, and then a new furnace, coil, and an outdoor unit. One thing to note is that whenever they installed this equipment the first time, you never take the return out of just one side on a five ton unit because you won't be able to have enough return. You gotta take it up on both sides or either the bottom and one side. Let me know your experience in the comments. If you got any questions, let me know those questions. This is a five ton unit, see? So 60,000 BTU for the coil, and this furnace is likely 120,000 BTU furnace. The limit switch was opening because we did not have enough airflow going through that furnace. Why? Because this coil, this 90% furnace, has a secondary heat exchanger, and that is the secondary heat exchanger. And because it was dirty, that's what was restricting our airflow and causing the furnace to get too hot. Other problems which the heat exchanger being cracked is one of them, and you saw that. So we don't need to replace the heat exchanger, we just need to replace the furnace. And we're gonna be able to offer the customer a better job because we've identified the reason for the heat exchanger possibly cracking. We don't have enough return. And we're gonna add another return, and we're po probably gonna try to add that return upstairs, but if we can't, as long as there's not a um, water heater down here that is gas, we can actually add a return right here. So we'll probably add a 20 by 20 return down here because this is definitely not sufficient. And when it goes over, it's panned. So you know that the joist space right there where that's panned is not enough for this five ton unit. Look at that. 
you could measure that and that is not enough for a five ton unit so we're going to offer to add another return if we can't do it upstairs we'll do it downstairs you just got to make sure you don't have any gas appliances downstairs because you don't want to pull in that uh, combustion air so from a water heater but we don't have a gas water heater down here in the basement so that's nice cause and effect you got to figure out what the cause is and even though this furnace is old and you would think heat exchanger is going to be busted there's always a cause hope you guys enjoyed this video i hope you learned something let me know in the comments if you did learn something what it was comment below if you don't have a question that's okay let me know who you are let me know where you're from You've been watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad, and I'll keep you cool if you let me.